three bit combat. It was Migre. And we are going to try this extra stage, I guess you call it, in uh, Arknights during the So Long Adele event. So let's uh, let's go. Actually, all the tiles. Okay. And we only have a very limited number of operators. Mary had a little fluffy beast. <laughs> yes! We're back to the sheep naming uh, on the stages. That's fun. I like that. I have no idea what's going on here. Oh! Aha! Let me briefly explain the rules of our competition. These special tiles are the competition objective zones and also serve as our playground. Take a good look, find all the objective zones on the map and cover them all in pure white steam. And keep an eye on the timer. If time runs out before you finish, then I win! Professor, the map seems to be full of unrevealed fluffy bodies. Let's try borrowing their power to quickly cover the zone with pure white steam. Oh, sh oh! Stuns all enemies, wow. What? Oh! Oh, you can- Oh! Alright. I, do, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying stuff out right now. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, they're all going down. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, uh, the sort of there we go. I mean, at least they drive down. No, no, stop it. There you go, die, bitch. Oh, oh. <laughs> Fuck! We are not doing too amazingly right now. Good old, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Actually, maybe I can. Okay, okay. Let me let me try again real quick. If we don't do it this time, I'll just continue with the story because we don't have we don't have time for this shit all day. One down. Okay. Mm, yeah, let's redeploy uh, our boy. Okay. Like how they're just leaving. Okay. 
He can't attack. Oh. Well. That is highly annoying. Oh, we don't. We only have 15 seconds. Come on. Oh no. So close. Okay, we, we basically know what we're supposed to be doing here. You can figure that out yourself. I'll do this later. I don't have time for this. We got a stage to finish. Oh, we got a story to finish. So let's go. Uh, oh, let's see what it looks like. Giant open map with all. Oh, okay. I was like, I was. There's no range tiles. Okay, so it's. Okay. All right. Okay. Giant open map. Yeah. <coughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Interesting. Giant open map. Uh, I guess we we need to change. Get, get some more quick. Um, our stem is going here. So, uh, yeah. Um, fine. Guess we'll just. Uh, I I want to try Swire, but eh, I don't want to spend too much money on, on that. So, whatever. Let's go. Let's just go. Oh, okay. I still don't get it. Why would a lady like you choose to spend your days in a hole like this? Aren't you afraid of the infected? Are the infected not but normal people saddened, saddled with misfortune? Just like this child of mine, yet unborn. Maybe she will become infected herself or remain a lucky one who just makes friends with them. Either way, I, I wish for her to live in a city full of love and goodness. Well, you're in the wrong game then. <laughs> sadness anyway if continuing to mine here would harm the environment shouldn't we stop for now this city can only rely on nature's pure bounty even so our descendants will definitely carve out a home with their own hands i hope that then you and i and all of them that all of us will find our own place in siesta the elderly unhindered by age the sickly unburdened by despair that is the siesta of my dreams that is the siesta I wish for my child to see. Could that really ever happen? Well, let's start with the mines. Huh. Little black sheep, why are you all alone? Do you know where the west went? Oh, so you keep eating those old signposts and addresses on letters. Is it because you are lost? You, can you understand me? Hmm. But the creature remains silent as it sniffs about, picking the next signpost to be devoured. Did you get lost when Siesta moved? Or is your home on the undeveloped plate instead of the mines? But the creature paused the ground urgently as Adele stands silently looking at it. Wait. Okay. Just wanted to check my sound. Okay. Uh, the fluffy creature paused the ground urgently as Adele stands silently looking at it. Yeah. Where does it want to go? Oh. What are you doing? As the need approaches Adele, pressing its head to Adele's chest as if listening to her heartbeat. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Hmm. Not this sound, not this sound. Fluffy creature lowers its head and continues following the path ahead. Are you looking for your home or your friends or your friends and family? Do you know where to find them? Bobby Creature turns its head, staring inquisitively at Adele. Adele, where are you? 
I need you. I need to. Okay. I'll, 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 yeah. Typo. I need you to help me with some data. Can you come to the museum now? That looks at the expecting creature in front of her. Uh, Professor Keller, I, I'm sick today. I feel dizzy and I have a headache too. Also, my legs hurt. I feel terrible. Terrible. Adele, what's wrong? Do you need to go to the hospital? Do you need my help? Do you have medicine on hand? I, how's your body temperature? Are you feverish? No, Professor, I'll be fine. I'm at the hospital right now. <laughs> Calling in sick, that's fun. With no reply forthcoming, the fluffy creature stomps the ground impatiently and turns to leave. Adele rushes to keep up with it. A car speeds by, frantically honking at Adele, who's just taking a step forward. Oh shit! Ugh, my ears. Adele, what are you doing here? Weren't you. P Professor Keller, I, I. I must have been pushing it too hard if a girl like Adele feels the need to fake an illness to rest. Adele, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you could take a day off to rest. Tony is set to confirm that Adele is no longer following the fluffy creature, skips off and leaves the street. Professor Keller, I want to take some time to relax here. Damn. Oh, hey Ceylon. What if I told you that I want to offer you a job with staple pay that isn't detrimental to your health? I'll even provide special lodgings for you. Don't worry, I can guarantee the working environment and conditions as well as medical services. You just need to pay a portion of the rent to the government. Yeah, even you can't go on, can you? I don't know what those government people are on about, but I know this much at least. These things take a lot of money, not a mere hundred of thousand gold certificates. With this money, I might be able to buy a decently comfortable bed, eat a nice meal, and it may even save my life if it comes to it. But I can't build what you're promising. I can do it. Doctor, if you're going... If you were to say you'd build us a cheaper hospital, frankly, I'd be really grateful and I, I'd actually believe you could do it. But saying that you'll provide jobs, homes and healthcare... Let's look around you. It's been so long and this place is still un still underdeveloped. I beg you to place your trust in me. I'll stand by my words. So if there really was a place like that, would you be willing to move there? Would you be happy with it? Hmm. Frustrated Siren feels her heart hammering in her chest. It's beat pounding her in her ears. What was that? Sorry, I missed what you said. I said, even Mr. Pelipper, our boss back at the old mines, only got us so far with all of his wealth and power. Doctor, we don't know you and do you, you don't owe us anything. We'll be grateful to you if you just come to treat us once in a while. Hmm. Alright. Of a creature thrusts ahead, they're following closely behind while Keller walks apologetically <laughs> behind her. After hesitating several times, she opened her mouth. Did you know what else? Yes, this layout remained the same even after it moved. There's a coffee shop down the street. They'll continue hurriedly along the path without stopping as if chasing something. Katja, Magna, and I met at that coffee shop. They'll stop moving and squints into the distance trying to spot the shop. Is it that one over there? I can't see the sign clearly. Mock? Mockingbird Cafe. Carol sighs in relief and changes her tone. I was just a student back then, knowing little about the world besides what I read in books. Katya and Magna were... Uh, Katya and Magna burned two young flames with eyes even brighter than obsidian. My parents... What were they like back then? Brilliant, interesting, and very attractive. Of course, some people thought they were weird. Not Professor Scottish, they were more like two vagrants chasing after volcanoes. They liked bright clothes and accessories, believing that they granted courage. They would sometimes camp outside beside lava flows just to feel the movement. Eh? Pff, I thought they had banned that kind of thing. They did. They banned me from doing it. Because I once followed them to collect some liquid from a sulfuric acid pool and accidentally stepped in a pit of boiling water. Katya managed to drag me out. I hadn't even felt the pain yet, but my shoes had already split like garlic cloves. Ooh. I gave Magna quite a fright. Even though 
It was an accident. She kept trailing after me from then on, fearing that I'd just fall into another hole somewhere when she wasn't looking. The creature seems to realize something, turning its head to look Keller up and down. As if worrying for her, it butts her ankles and even tries to eat her shoe seals <laughs> shoe heels, so that she can walk more comfortably. Just like Mooty worry about me getting hurt. Magna? I couldn't compare her care for, for me to what she felt for you. Sorry, I was lost in fun. After you were born, I came to visit you occasionally. I thought you looked so much like your parents. You're doing the same work as them now feels like. Feels like part of them has never left, that they still remain here. If only they were still here. Oh. We're back on the sadness. There's, that's the Arknights we all know and uh, appreciate, I guess. <laughs> anyway. Following the salty scent of the sea carried on the breeze, the fluffy creature began scampering away. The towering cranes of the undeveloped plate peek over the horizon as Keller hurries forward and turns her head. Adele! Magna once said we are like tiny little ants standing on this vast landscape, talking big about how we plan to conquer it. Look at both of us now, Adele. Two little ants standing here, facing this building dozens of times bigger than us. I used to think I would... I would be just like before feeling infinitesimally small and amounting to nothing. But so now they realize some things are too hard to say aloud. Professor Keller, what do you... Nothing. Adele, how can I tell you? There is something sus going on here, I knew it! Khan wasn't bullshitting. You can still see a little bit of O's Siesta from here. Mount Siesta is over at that side. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows when it will really erupt? The creature carrying a minus lamp slows down stairs, blankly in the direction of Old Siesta. The waves wash over the distant gravel, the surface sparkling like brilliant gems. Once it erupts, once the museum is ready, my work will finally be done. I'm sorry I'm taking up so much of your time, Adele. It's alright, Professor Keller. There's no one else who can tell me about my parents anyway. I'm really happy to know these things. Aww. Keller stands and brushes the dirt off herself. Are you leaving now? Maybe I need to buy some courage, like in that dream you mentioned. Goodbye, Adele. See you tomorrow. Rest well and don't tire yourself. Bill glances at the creature still staring blankly at old siesta. Bye, Professor Keller. Hmm. While well, the creature stands motionless on the beach. Did you find the place you were looking for? Del sits down next to the motionless creature. Let me guess, you are a miner who wanted to return here? The creature shakes, shakes his head from side to side. Putting its gaze from the ocean to Adele opposite herself. Its clear eyes look up at her. It chews on no side pose as if steadily paw as it steadily paws at the ground. Aww. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Slowly it turns to leave the area. No? I wonder why this one seems so eh, different, I guess. There this there's the shirt! Hell yeah! There's the shirt. No, no, no. I'm just an old man who likes collecting pretty rocks. I can't do what you want or help you at all. Mr. Brown, these workers said that you uh, that your father owned the mine and that they all worked for you for many years. Even after the move, you still helped make their lives better under the table. Yes, that's right. My father's mine made them into infected while I decorate my house with rocks they risked their lives to dig out. Am I helping them? As if they're barely surviving as it is. And at most, they're not jobless. So you admit it? No! My god, calm down, woman! Don't you go breaking my collection! Well then, let's talk about your collection. Before Siesta moved, this obsidian was extremely precious ore. Her only obsidian that was pure enough, or which reflected the colors of the rainbow, could fetch a good price. I'm sure you're aware. Sailor bends down and drags out two boxes of ore from behind the cabinet. So what are these? 
Why would collector like you have crude, impure obsidian like this? Exactly like the obsidians, the, the workers squirreled away. And what would you know? All obsidian is precious to me. Then why did you stop the workers from mining? What stopped you from working them to the death instead of arranging gainful employment for them as drivers, ticket sellers, and security guards? Those are lifelines they found for themselves. Oh, so you just helped them along while indirectly earning money off them? Yes, that's absolutely right. Why do you refuse to admit it? They're not living well right now. The obsidian that they mined propped up siesta, but now... Hmm. Fidel heaves a great sigh and sinks back onto his seat. Missy, do you think it's that easy changing the policies of an entire city? Look at them now, look at me. You've heard them call me Mr. Brown. Brown Mines, the entire company is in my hands. But I, even I can't build a factory for them to make a living in. The government will harass me, my peers will plot against me, and that's not even considering Colombia and Victoria. Just keeping to ourselves here in Siesta isn't that bad. You do know, Colombia has infected pay high, sky high insurance premiums then sends them to the mine in the wastelands I know that that's why I came, came to you for help you have far more knowledge and experience with the situation than me if Colombia uses the infected question to attack us we can just build our own place for infected first if your peers begin plotting we can try to negotiate with them there must be something we can do we can't just hide away in this Spring Hotel forever. What would that accomplish? Getting increasingly agitated, Sigan feels as if her heart is about to leap out of her chest. Damn, people need to calm down right now. Damn, everyone is just <laughs> going crazy. This is the best leverage for Siesta to negotiate with Colombia right now. But you seem. Yes, I'm five months along now. The doctor says it's a girl. Congratulations! But then you. Siesta needs to develop. It can't wait any longer. That's why I want to help these workers. I want to teach them. I want them to learn how to avoid danger, how to observe the environment, how to best protect themselves after a catastrophe. They have only gotten by with experience so far, but I can give them knowledge. Will that work? The mine is huge and there are so many illiterate people who only know how to earn money. Father says things like that are very common, and that there are always many workers, so we don't need to care too much. That's different. Tom cares, Hank cares, Bill cares. Many... Ah, no way. Many workers will care. I also want to push a new policy regarding the current state of these workers. These workers who've contracted aripathy due to obsidian mining should be taken better care of. But your father tells me that the government will never have time for this. They only want to earn more and more money to develop siesta. Then I will bring their attention here. I can't just sit in, in an office all day with the knowledge that they're getting hurt and sick. What would that do? Lady Jenny caresses her pregnant belly, feeling a little heartbeat of the life growing peacefully inside. But don't, but don't, but don't. What's with the heartbeats in this entire stage? Miss, may I have your name? No. Oh, the, the pregnant lady they talked about. Uh, Barbara, right? That's her, I think. Young lady, what's your name? Who knows, I might see you again in the future. If you really manage to do something, I'll lend you my help. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Barbara Doikas. You can call me Barbara. Ceylon. Oh, it's her mom! Yo! Okay. Okay. Wow. So now we know uh, Ceylon's mother's name. Wow. Okay. Ceylon. Ceylon Doikas. Alright, I'll remember. Wait, Doikas? We're near Fashion Street already. Where are you actually going? Little black sheep, what does the mining lamp on your back really mean? The creature continues forward, leisurely searching and cheering. Sounds pass by, twitching ears, the sound of wind, people, and in the far distance, the rumblings of volcanic activity. Badoop, badoop, badoop. 
Sounds like sparking thunder resu resound in its ears, overwhelming the sounds of geologic activity and flowing magma. But up, but up, but up. It stops in the middle of the street, blankly looking from side to side before it breaks into a sudden run, sprinting away on all fours. Wait, where are you going? Did you find it? It's here. Barbara was your mother? Yup. Hold on. Wait, this, this. Standing on a chair, Bolivar retrieves a delicate box from the top of the cabinet. Behind the glass cover, a large, uncut geode lays there, obsidian crystal sparking. No, wait, I should call them over. They were the ones who left me with this. Tom, Hank and Bill, I need to get them all here. Yes, Barbara was my mother. Mr. Brown, what is this? Who are Tom, Tom Hank and Bill? Ceylon Doikas. This is a gift that those workers prepared for your mother a long time ago to celebrate your birth and express their gratitude. A gift for mother? My mother? In the end, she wasn't able to receive the gift. I'll explain to the old men when they get here. I want them to see me hand this over to you. Your mother! No black sheep! A fluffy creature steps into the hotel as if guided by a sound. The sound is coming from a lady, her chest heaving from agitation. Eyes oh, beating. With each beat, it transports blood across all four limbs. It carries nutrition from the mother's body all the way to the slumbering little infant. That tiny little heartbeat has gone up. I think I'm gonna call this episode the, the Great Heartbeat or something like that. <laughs> the Great Throbbing of the Chest or something, something colorful like that. This this entire episode is just heartbeats. The fluffy creature rests its head on Ceylon's chest. Ceylon doesn't see anything, but she feels the sun warmth. It's heavy as if something has fallen into her lap. Ceylon? Asia. See now suddenly it feels as if she can see something, something growing heavier in her lap. A little sheep gradually appears before her, its head leaning against her chest as if listening to something. See now's heart is beating violently and making thundering sounds that only she and the little sheep can hear. She sees the little sheep lightly nose the geo before bumping her forehead with its own. This is a little black sheep. She's no longer lost. She seems to uh, have found what she's looking for. Lost? Uh, don't drop that geode. If it shatters, I'll be done for. The little sheep nimbly leaves from Ceylon's lap and disappears into the mist. Aja, what was that? You saw it, didn't you? It's a farewell, I guess. A farewell and a reunion. Oh. That was that was wholesome. Okay. We started off sad, but now we got wholesome. Okay. Cry on my shoulder. Okay, no no funny sheep uh, name here. Alright. You need me to. I'll wreck this place without hesitation. You gotta love the uh... Oh yeah, 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 true. Hey, now, uh, now our boyfriend Rigo can help, so that's good. Oh, 
Huh. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes, so good. Let's get some boss damage. Oh wait, no. Oh, I had to. I was gonna put him up here, though. No. That sucks. Oh well. Now we have a chin. Yeah. Yeah, come here, bitch. Fight me. Oh, she can, wow. We need white steam, not this bullshit. Oh boy. Jen, help me. <laughs> I need you, Jen. Jen, help me. <laughs> Boom! Boom! Boom them, please! Fuck you. No, not happening, bitch. Yeah! Okay, well, that was easy. I get the gist of that uh, uh, bottle breaking stage, but I don't I don't want to waste your time with it if you're just here for the story. So, but you could see that you just need to put the ranges on top and all that shit. So, easy peasy actually. Anyway, hmm. I recall this place being industrial land, not suitable for a casual visit. This spot is the closest we have to OCS, so let me just sit here quietly. Is that so? Can you even see anything from here when we're so far away from there? Rhodes Island's office should be pretty close to City Hall. It's been two months since you've returned and you haven't paid me a single visit. Shouldn't the mayor be swamped with work this time of year? How would you have time for family? Oh, Ceylon, no. When you're free, you should go stroll around the streets, listen to the people grumbling about you. Then you understand 
how you've been doing. There are many things that I could have done a better job with. As a siesta and I want to ask the mayor a question. Why have all the volcanoes, coasts, culture and music that we've been so proud of completely vanished? Why are there so many people struggling to integrate into their new lives? Why don't City Hall just do anything to help them? I want to blame the brain on CB blame on City Hall too. They should have prepared for the move sooner. But as Herman Dorcas' daughter, I still have to say this. It's been hard for you, Dad. Mm. When I came back this time, I had planned to help Rhodes Island establish a branch office here, but I understand the infected in Siesta are facing some extra challenges right now. Colombia's pedantic word game with their laws is just another card game for them to play. They don't care about the lives of these few infected. They only want the slice of Siesta's future large-scale international trade pie. 8,573. I looked in. Uh, I looked at the info. This is a number of registered infected who settled in Siesta last month. You can either impose a ban to prevent any more infected from settling on Siesta's nomadic plates or hand them a larger sum of money for their health insurance. From a bystander's point of view, the latter is not an option for City Hall. There is no way I could have forgotten that my other daughter is infected herself. Hmm. In our short decades of history, Siesta has faced many difficulties, but the past Siesta takes is always in the hands of us Siestans. I will think of something that is always a way. Then allow me to help you out a little. To square off against Colombia's word games, you can likewise designate an area outside the nomadic city and declare it for development, which will be done by the infected. And as for what kind of work, my two friends recently arrived and also also interested in helping. A budding logistics company should manage to provide many jobs. Ah yes, Bison and Swire, hell yeah. In addition, I will use Rose Island's resources to establish a treatment center for the infected. This is something I've always wanted to do. For Swartz's sake and for many other innocent besides. I'm not I'm not just someone who ne who needs your care. I'll find my own way to protect Siesta too. I seem to remember my daughter not having a degree in politics. I guess I've been unwilling to inference, that's all. Politics is no simple thing, but I'm happy to hear that you have such thoughts. I'll earnestly consider the infected treatment center you mentioned, and I'll continue cooperating with Mountain Dash Logistics. Oh, her father is actually a good dude. For once we have a, a leader in a, in a government that's not a total dickhead. <laughs> that's rare. It's like finding a goddamn unicorn. Anyway. Ever since you became mayor, Siesta has been relatively relaxed towards the infected. Some people say you're just putting on a show to win the minor support. Others say you're just trying to make more money for tur from tourism. And now I'm more inclined to believe that the things you've been doing are related to mom. You. When did you find out? Just earlier. I heard a little story about it. You've never taken the initiative to tell me those stories. And rarely ever actively bring up mom with me. Mm. Barbara was a Victorian. To the existence of the time, Victoria, who wanted to annex us, was our, was our greatest enemy. I was busy with Colombian and Victoria diplomacy, but I never dared to let anyone know that my wife just happened to be from Victoria. But Barbara never took it to heart. She had her own things to do. She said she was protecting the city in her own way. And you too. Protecting the city in her own way? You never lived a day of your life with her. But what you said just now is exactly the sort of thing she'd say. She was a great woman. And she had a great daughter. Thank you, Ceylon. Ah, that was wholesome. There we go. That's the wholesome I wanted. That was so sweet. Uh, could you lower the camera a little? Angle it upwards a bit? So I look more imposing? Wait, too low. Alright, that's good. Check the recorder too. Everything I say has to be crystal clear. Hey! <laughs> Nice. Hello, Mr. Adam Swire. As always, I first wish you a good health. By the time this day reaches you, I should have completed both my siesta trip and all the business objectives I sought to accomplish. 
Perhaps you may still take this as a child's folly. No, your inside must have recognized the value of this city, the value of free and independent entropod. Oh, it's actually, it's actually, oh, it is actually recording. That's fun. That's fun. I've known from my first day here in Siesta that I've been tailed by some of our people watching my every move, perhaps at your behest, or perhaps at that of your other hairs trying to obstruct me. But that no longer matters. I've long since realized that trying to read your mind is a laborious and pointless endeavor. But if you are the one standing opposite me, then I've won this time. Good shit, Swire. Don't take shit from no one. What did you call me here for exactly? To give you a report on the project. Mountain Com Trade has signed an agreement with Siesta. If everything goes smoothly, construction will begin around autumn. When the logistics center's construction is complete, we'll open trade with three countries, Sargon, Victoria, and Colombia. As the supply chain matures, we'll increase our scope. The natural trading advantages that comes with the independent state of New Siesta and the locals' eagerness for foreign goods will give us confidence in any future developments here at Mountain Com Trade. You've always told me about the future you envisioned and wanted to realize Mountain, mountain Dash logistics, and now we've taken the actual first step. I've already seen the report on this project. Well done. You didn't let me down. No, I could say that you've that your growth makes me proud. Give yourself a proper vacation for the rest of the summer. Thank you for your approval, but there's another report that you haven't seen yet. It's regarding the progress of mountain com trades splitting from mountain dash logistics. Hmm. Oh he didn't like that. Oh It ties little okay. From now on, Mountain Cantron will cease to be a subsidiary of Mountain Dash Logistics, and the series of projects we'll do for New Siesta's core development will have no connection to Mountain Dash Logistics. Do you understand what you're implying? As president and CEO of Mountain Dash Logistics, you will no longer have any right to interfere in Mountain Com Trade's affair. Mountain Dash Logistics will need not bear any of Mountain Com's trade liabilities or responsibilities. Of course, making such a decision without you in the loop has its uncertainties in the process. If you don't agree with my decision to follow up with legal action, I'm afraid I'll be in a lot of trouble. What I want to know is, why do it this way? Is this a step you've, al you've always wanted to take? Not having to care about the constraints of the Federation of Enterprises, letting Mountain Dash Statistics make an actual change across the land? You really have surprised me. It seems like you've mustered the strength to do this. Of course found a reliable business partner. Indeed. Oh, they're both uh, taking charge of their calls earlier. I like that. Not gonna let them uh, stop. Not gonna, let, gonna, not gonna let those idiots stop them. That's awesome. The last few days of this siesta and holiday have shown me what a young and yet vibrant city it is. Its youth carry with it plenty of problems though. But it is precisely because of its youth that it holds unlimited possibilities. In fact, that's a question I've been thinking about for a long while. Just how is it that you, an old man on his way out, are able to keep an iron grip on the many faces in the family with their own clandestine agendas? I thought and thought before I finally came to a conclusion. You've allowed yourself to become a symbol. No one knows your true intentions, nor do they know whom uh, amongst them has your confidence. This fear of the unknown leaves them with only one option. To holy fuck, what is that word? To equate to you. I'm I'm gonna pretend that's how you say that. This is how you've manipulated the Federation of Enterprises and even Longman's economic lifeline for so many decades. I may not ever manage to learn this trick of yours, but such a style of control always meets an end. How will the Federation of Enterprises cope without their leader when you're gone? How many of them will take advantage of the chaos to recklessly reap personal profit? I think that's something you wouldn't want to happen either. Perhaps you still have faith in your personal physician, but as the soon-to-be commissioner of, Longman, of the Longman Guard Department, and also part of the younger generation, I must make plans for a Longman future without you. The Longman order can't resist in the hands of just one person. If I hadn't become a messenger, I wouldn't have known about the various differences between the many countries and regions on this great land. The vast distances in between make 
communication difficult and cause the differences, different cultures to grow into their own distinct styles. So when someone builds a bridge between these countries and regions, it's bound to trigger drastic change. Many people instinctively fear this sort of change. Some prefer to stay passively conservative and others look to take advantage of the term of a personal gain. But the act of changing the landscape itself surely has a positive significance to it. This is Mountain Dash's ambition and also my own as a messenger. I've never regretted becoming an LTD superintendent, but in this past few years I've realized that I can do more than just maintain Longman security. I also have the power to help build it. The cooperation with Mountain Com Trade is my bargaining chip. I believe international trade will be an indispensable part of Longman's future economic market. And at that moment when they're all starting, staring intently at the legacy you've left behind, I will use my own means to secure a seat in Longman's Chamber of Commerce and lead a new order. No matter how brilliant the sunset is, a new sun will always rise. Well done, well done. Oh, there's snow scent. Got it all snow scent? Yes. Miss Wilde, that whole speech. Send this recording to Longman. I wish I could see the old man fuming with my own eyes, but I can probably imagine what it would look like. I wouldn't be surprised if all my cars were frozen after a while. R really? Then will we be stuck here? Won't you lend me some money? <laughs> I, I, if you really need my help, Miss Fire, just kidding. I brought enough cash for the both of us to fully enjoy our vacation. Any further annoyances, we'll have to wait until we return to Longman. All right, now that we're all done here for real, let's officially begin our holiday. Hey, good shit, good shit. You should just give up straightening that parasol. The sky started turning dark by the time you got it up. There's no more sun to block anymore. We gotta get the grill we used in our old shop up and running. It's almost been a year since we last set up a booth, but it's definitely going to be popular today. Sandworm legs. But no one supplies that nowadays. I found a seller at the fair earlier. I kept some for you in the fridge behind the guitar. Really? Awesome! Phew, Mr. Tom, I've got your cold drinks here. Anything else I can help you with? Thank you so much, sweetheart. You've been so busy helping me with so many things. Here, this comb is for you. Thank you. Are you guys going to sell barbecue again? It's for a party tonight. A party? Why haven't I heard of it? Let's all meet up before everyone from the shopping district moves. You won't know when we'll see each other next or when we'll open another shop. Be careful with the fire, everyone, and stay safe. Don't go too close to the beach at night. I'll do my best with any anything else that needs doing. Aw, didn't you come here for a vacation with Swire? Ah, after spending a few days here, I think it's more fun this way. Hello, may I know how much this harmonica costs? You can have it if you like. But if you want an instruction book or something, then I'll take some of your money. Ah, that's how I make sure people who buy instruments learn to play them. Do you know how to play the harmonica, sir? What's it like? Of course I do. The feeling of playing the harmonica, huh? Feels like the wind when it blows through the leaves and they make that rustling sound. Sounds like stepping on a beach with the seawater slapping the sand around. That's what it feels like. You'll know it too when the smoke from my grill rises and the strings on my guitar move. Come, eat anything you want. Feel free to bring your own meat too, I can help you grill it. Hold on, I have some leftover streamers from the time I moved out. Just wait a sec while I bring them here. Wait, I'll come too. Damn, they're all just vibing out here. That's awesome. Enos, help me bring those over to the party. Whoa, aren't those wine bottles from your collection feeling generous today? Just treat it as a goodbye to the shopping district and old siesta too. When I was a kid, the adults used to say that the volcano would erupt one day. And now we're really leaving this beach and moving to the new home in the nomadic city. All homes end up demise someday. Even this magnificent, sturdy nomadic city has no way to live longer than that volcano. Now that the volcano is waking up, siesta can't sleep anymore. We just have to move along with the nomadic city. That's pretty pretty transparent of you. So are you still sad to leave the shop? What difference does it make? 
Even if I know there's no choice, I still have to prepare my goodbyes. I think about that a lot and I still can't figure it out. I don't know who's the most me where's the most meaningful place to be. If I go, then does that mean When I was your age I wasn't thinking so much about such things. My head was full of places I wanted to run off to. I wanted to get to know all kinds of people, play all kinds of rock music, learn local languages and figure out how to fit them into a song. You know yourself, it was those days that I met Chuck in Siesta. We wanted to see the beautiful white volcano people kept talking about, but we spent months wandering the beach and volcanoes with no luck. And just as we were about to leave Siesta to continue chasing the legend, we found in a corner of the fashion street a baby sleeping soundly. So we stayed in Siesta, opened a bar, Chuck continued his travels while I decided to hang back and see what this kid would grow up into. And here we are! Huh. If we hadn't found you, the white volcano would have been just a name on a legend. Later we adopted Lot and then Liv. You've all been growing up and you've also stopped laughing as much as you used to. But on that day of the trade fair, all the surfboards from the shop disappeared and the few of you looked so flustered dressed in hot spring water. But you looked so so happy. To tell you the truth, I was happy too. <coughs> in that moment I was thinking it'd be nice if some of these changes let our family stay as happy as we've ever been. After all, I care more about you kids than the white volcano. Good priorities. In check. Good. Good. Hmm. I also want to wait until the white volcano starts renovating, then I'll... Leave it for now. Our old friends can't wait any longer, so go bring the booze over, Anus. It's fine, kiddo. No need to worry about me. Well, you want to stay here or go see what's beyond siesta, whatever your plans, just go for it, like I did when I was your age. If you wait until the strings are loose, you won't get to play the songs you want to sing. Hmm. Enos. Aww, so cute. Aja, why aren't you joining them? I'm not good at dancing, and it's still a bit difficult for me to keep up with the rhythm. Hmm, well then I'll keep you company for a bit, we can chat. The last time you came to see me, you said you were experiencing hallucinations and seeing sheep. I thought the hallucinations were some kind of symptom of, of reprophy, but back then I saw it too. There was a small warm leaning on my chest listening to my heartbeat. I'm sure I saw it and I and even felt it too. It's so strange, I don't know why, but it makes me suddenly think about my mom, even though I've never met her. Aja, just what was that sheep from that day? Hmm. I had a dream where I was wearing Muti's protective gear, played with two little sheep for a whole night and they spoke to me a lot. That dream felt so familiar. It was just like when I was a little girl together with my parents. Some fireworks suddenly explode in a little, a, a little distance away. The sky is not yet dark and the smoke leaves a long trail. The children who sneakily set off the fireworks went away laughing, followed by their parents laughing as they scold their children. <laughs> When I was little, I didn't have much chance to play like that with my parents. They spent all their time on volcanoes, so I fell in love with volcanoes too. But since that day, I've been thinking, they're still climbing even now, aren't they? Perhaps my mother is still doing what she'd like to do. But Aja, isn't it strange for me to be thinking like this? I keep thinking these last few days, it would be great if I could see that sheep again. Or if I could dream about it, like you were talking about. Have you seen that sheep, sheep again since? No, it was the last one I saw. Hey ladies, enough sitting over there. Come on over and have some barbecue. Her barbecue is really tasty. Aja, did you try it the last time you were here? I don't remember. The last time I visited Ceylon was still all huffy and puffy. Hey, that's ancient history. Let's not bring it up. Aja, what are your thoughts on Siesta on this trip? Compared to last time, it's much more relaxed and more romantic too. You should visit more often as long as your health permits. You will be able to see it then, a better and better siesta thanks to the joint efforts of so many. Two of them stand on the barrens, looking toward the sea. They can vaguely make out the shadows of some volcanoes. When do you think they'll erupt? When it happens, there'll be so much more work to do. Yes, and when that time comes, we'll do a great job ourselves. Or maybe we'll get to see the little sheep again? Hello, Professor Keller. Alright. 
I'm, I'll, I'll be heading back now. What's the matter? There's a little problem with the volcano observation data. Oh, fuck. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's the creepy music. Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Is it going to erupt sooner? The data fluctuates a lot, so maybe it's just an anomaly, but... If there's really a problem, we'll make a broadcast. I'll be counting on you if it comes to that, Ceylon. Oh, shit. Ooh. Looks like luck's on my side instead of theirs this time. She is very unlucky. Poor genie. I mean, uh, Ponsaris. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, the last stage. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Huh. How fun they're going. Okay, so they're going. Uh, okay. Anyway. Well, thank you for watching, comrades. Um, yeah. I fucked up a little in this stage, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what to do, so I'll be doing that when uh, when I'm done with this video. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, comrades. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, do leave a like. And uh, if you have any thoughts about the event so far, uh, do leave a comment. And uh, if you want more Arknights or possibly something else in the future and you like what you saw here, do subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's it for this time. I'll see you tomorrow with the finale. Have a good day, comrades. Das Vidanya.